friends, hello everyone, welcome back to another Lua tutorial. So in this tutorial, we will be discussing functions. Now a function is a snippet of code that you can execute as if it was a variable. For example, let's go here and say local function say hello. And this will just print hello. Now we can call this by going say hello and then adding two brackets at the end. And this will call this function here, which will print hello. So if we run this, we get hello. And of course we can put as many things in here as we want. As you can see, if we were to go print one, and then two as well. And we were to do this, so print it two times by calling hello, then we'll get hello one two, hello one two. So every time you call this function here, it will execute the code inside of it. And you can call it as many times as you want. This is a great way to stop yourself from having to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. This is a very common practice where programmers will try and reduce the amount of times they have to copy paste a line of code or even a block of code. Where variables can save you a line of code, a function can save you a block of code. Now let's say we wanted to make this hello function a bit more complex. So instead of just saying hello, we want to pass in a name. For example, hello, Jack. Well, this here isn't very useful because they will always print out the same name. So instead, what we can do is we can pass in an argument and we can call it name. So this is like a variable that gets passed into this function. Now, instead of saying Jack, we can say dot dot name dot dot. There we go. Now if we go here and we say Luke by passing it in here between these brackets and this would be name. We'll get hello Luke. If we change this to Jack, we'll get hello Jack. Sometimes you want to give it a default value. So if you don't pass in a name, you want a name to be a default value. Well, to do that, we can say local name is equal to name or Jack. So what's happening here is we're declaring a new name variable. And then we're basically overwriting what this is going to be on the end of the day. So we're saying this name is equal to itself. Or if there's nothing in here, if this is a false value such as nil, then make it Jack. So it will default to Jack. So if we have free here, the first has nothing inside of it. The second has Mike and the third has Sally. Then if we run this, we get hello, Jack, hello, Mike, hello, Sally. Without that there, if we did this, we'd get an error because you cannot concatenate a nil value because this name here would be nil if we didn't pass in anything in here. Let's go a bit more complex and do sum. And this will get the sum of two things. Let's say we get num1 and num2. Then here we can just return the value. But how does one return a value here? Because we could print out what it is, so print num1 and num, or num1 plus num2. And we could call this sum 10. And just to show you, you could also go local x is equal to 20. You could also pass a variable in here, so x. So it will be 10 plus 20. If we run this, we get 30. But what if we want to work with the value that this returns, that this would give us? So we wanted to store local answer is equal to sum and then print the answer is 
and then ons. What if we wanted to do something like this? Well, we'll get a problem here because we cannot concatenate a nil value. This here is nil because sum just prints out this value here. To return a value, we can use return and this will return this value. You could either do it like this or you could go local result is equal to that and then return the result. Now, anything here with return will be returned from this function and nothing after this return will be executed, which we'll explore in a second. If we run this now, we get the answer is 30 because this here now returns this result, which can be either in its own variable or like that. But take note, we can go here and say print func start and then func end. You'll notice we get some red squiggly lines. End of file expected after return. That is because after return, we are not allowed to put anything there anymore because after return, nothing will execute. So if we run this, it will just throw us an error because nothing should be after return. Once you return, the function stops executing. But this doesn't limit you as much as you think it would. If we say, let's go here and say local val num1 plus num2. If val is more than 10, then return val. If val is less than 100, then return negative val. Otherwise, we could just return val times 2. So this is just an example where just because we have a return doesn't mean it will stop everything else from executing because this return will only run if the value is more than 10. And this code here will never really work as expected. So let's make that equal to 10. There we go. So this will only execute if the value is equal to 10. This will only execute if the value is less than 100, but not equal to 10 because this will ex stop the execution first. So if we say one plus two, then that will give us negative three because it is less than 100. So it will give us this. If we say eight plus two, it will give us 10 because the value is 10. If we were to say here 101, so 101 plus two, that will give us 206 because it's the value times two. Of course, this can become a lot more complex in the future. But that's the basics on functions. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next Lua tutorial.